Hello everybody, welcome back to Quantum Break. We are in Act 4 Part 2, going to repair the time machine. Just check it, there's nothing I, I don't imagine it would be because it would show up when I did this, but... Uh... What's yelling? Um, yeah, so, we're hopefully going to find out what the plan is. If Let's see how Dr. Amaral's doing with the time she machine. She fixes it. Yeah. I've got to keep an eye out for... I don't think we can trust her. No. The way she looked at the countermeasure, like she's seen it before. Right. She knows what it does. She does know what it does. You think Will told her about it? No, I think they stole it from Will. No. Or us, technically. Will was never the kind to open up. Yeah, he doesn't drive me as the sort. I can relate. The little I know of him. Will takes it to the next level. When we were kids, the only way that Will could express anything important to me was by informing my stuffed giraffe when I was in the room. <laughs> It's precious. <laughs> That's good. Weird. Yeah, definitely both of those things. Um, I don't imagine there'll be anything out in this bit because we already found stuff out here. But I just want to double check. Nothing's popping up on the radar at the moment. So I'm assuming not. But we don't know where the TV will be. It's interesting that um, there is going to be so much more stuff here as well to find because obviously. We looked at a bunch of stuff last time we were here, but I suppose we didn't look at technically everything because there's a lot more that we probably would have seen or be able to see uh, in a lab like this. Did she find anything? I'm not sure. I'll go check. No. <laughs> I want to know what this orange thing is over here first. Thank you. Jack, you've got to see this. Where are you? Where are they? Stuff there as well. What do you got, Amy? I'm serious, Jack. I'm this is big right stuff here. I've got you here. You have to yell at me. Jeez. That's hey. Two seconds. To just have a quick Shouldn't look. Should you be keeping an eye on Amaral? Okay, but first, you need to check out the intel I uncovered. Actual intel? Or well, that? You should probably see what Dr. Amaral's doing. Shh. I'm sorting out Amy first. All right. She didn't what have actual intel. I don't think there was any in this. I uploaded all the files oh. I stole on that USB stick from the Monarch security station. I also found a video of your brother. It's on that TV. You're gonna want to see it. Oh, Everything else I printed out and put on tables over there. Fabulous. So you put all my collectibles in one place for me. How very helpful of you. Okay. The date is... February 28th. Jesus, Will. William Joyce. 1999. 1999. After months oh, of work, my machine is finally ready for human testing. Ready is defined by me since ready is obviously a relative term when you're dealing with the deformation of the chronon field and recreating of black hole's mass density by tangent. Okay, in short summary, I built a time machine and it works. I'm going to prove it. Or die. Okay. Just need to make some final preparations. When I enter the machine, I will travel clockwise around the corridor. Okay. Core is active. Chronon levels are stable. I'll travel clockwise around the corridor, exiting back into the same location in the near future. Oh. This clock is set to my watch. Now, when I exit the machine, there should be a significant difference in time between my watch and the clock in this room. Corridor is locked in place. Okay, setting the date to five minutes to the future for the first test. Now, admittedly, traveling to the past would be much more impressive, but I can travel backwards in time only as far as the first activation of the machine's core, which is, well, now. Machine's ready. Monitor is stable. What I'm about to do is gonna change the very fabric of the I don't remember. Oh. What happened? 
Did that unlock now in my um not collectibles. It's not collectible. But my ripples are somewhere down here. Um diaries. Yes. I wonder what happened at the end there. He suddenly couldn't remember. It was like things had been changed. And he fell over. I wonder if but you can't change the past based on his theory. So how would that happen? That something happened. Hmm. Interesting. Hey, Amy, what am I looking at here? I've been recording Monarch communications with the radio that Beth left me. I made a compilation of anything that seemed like it might be useful. Oh. So HQ come in. This is first aid one. We've got a situation here at the hospital over. Do you think this is to do with Liam? Uh, Monarch Radio Commander, go ahead, first aid one, over. Unknown personnel, it's a mess down here, HQ. Burke showed up for his wife like we thought. Gibson intercepted him. Burke wouldn't come quietly, so Gibson drew on him and, well, Gibson's dead. Burke strangled him with a power cord in full sight of half the hospital, so that kind of should show, over. Do you have a situation contained? Where's Burke now? We're working the scene and wiped the footage, but Gibson didn't have backup, so who knows how many people saw the fight or where they are now. Same goes for Burke. He's in the wind, so is his wife. Over. Copy that. First aid one. We'll run with that on our end. Just tidy up things over there, over and out. Lifeboat document. Memo controlling the river port situation. From Ogawa to field team leads. I know the situation is fluid and things are progressing fast, but I want to reiterate our strategy for maintaining control over the city of Riverport. As you all know, we can't actually directly control the city. We don't have the manpower and we don't have the actual authority. It's therefore vital that we maintain a good relationship with the media and the local authorities and have them do much of the heavy lifting for us. Ideally, everything we do should be either undertaken by the authorities under our discrete direction or in cases where we take action ourselves, backed by the powers that be, creating the illusion that Monarch Solutions is working in cooperation with legal authorities. Make no mistake, although we've been successful thus far, the situation is not stable and it can change quickly. If key parties in the city lose confidence in us and our ability to handle the crisis, our control will erode very quickly. Therefore, we must nurture this relationship even as we conduct our own operations some of which involve considerable troop mobilization and combat action. This is a constant balancing act, and while I'm confident we can pull it off, there's no room for error. We can't afford to grow complacent and sloppy. Fortunately, we are well prepared for this contingency. Uh, long before we reached this point, we established a good rapport with the mayor, Riverport PD, and other major authorities within Riverport, as well as most of the important media outlets. Our strategy is twofold. One, maintain control. It's imperative that we ensure that the city's various power structures remain under our control. I'm sorry, I'm getting really distracted because right there is my dog staring at me really intently. <laughs> I don't know what she wants. <laughs> I'm just like, do you mind? Um, let's, see, let's see if I can get a picture of her doing that. Because then I can show you what I'm looking at right now. Okay, is that a picture? I'll add that on the screen. Um, so, where did I get to? Uh maintain remain under our control this means maintaining a close relationship with numerous individuals and organizations as well as manipulating the information at their disposal while charlie wincott is unfortunately no longer working on this project due to unforeseen complications he has set up powerful tools and procedures for scrubbing the internet and identifying and locating problematic situations and individuals we're stationing people in key locations and maintaining control often under the guise of advisors and consultants to people in power they are ready to step in as required. Anybody working in these roles needs to be proactive and project a constant aura of helpful authority and dependability. Diplomacy is the order of the day. People, that's vital for maintaining certain fictions, such as Jack Joyce's culpability in the events at the university, etc. So she's interviewing me in the future as if she doesn't know my involvement, whilst clearly saying that that is a complete fiction about my involvement. I'm starting to doubt everything about you, Adala. So, number two is minimize conflict. 
That is to say, make sure that individuals, whether they're politicians, city officials, police officers, reporters, ordinary citizens, etc., uh, suffer a minimal impact from our activities. If we have to use force, the situation needs to take place out of sight and remain entirely contained. Whether containment means misdirection, coercion, intimi intimidation, bribery, or some other means depends on the circumstances, but it's vital that nobody is left in a position to complain. To be explicitly clear, this doesn't mean we can eliminate witnesses and cover it up. When people don't come home, others start to get uh, asked questions, so that has to be the last resort. I expect all supervisors to monitor their teams closely to ensure that things stay on an even keel. I know most of our operatives haven't been trained in the soft touch, and I'll be blunt. The last thing we need is somebody thinking this is Afghanistan and smacking a civilian around. We're one YouTube video away from this whole thing blowing up in our faces, so we have to maintain our operational profile throughout. For all these activities, we have a consider uh, considerable budget. Monarch Solutions is very well off. We've been building resources for a long time, and this is considered a priority. So we can buy a lot of silence and cooperation from authorities and citizens alike. But that only works as long as those things are for sale. And the moment we're seen as a threat, that opportunity will vanish. Uh, if you see a problem, be proactive and call it in. Don't let anything run out of control or think it'll work itself out. We have to be sure the situation can unravel faster than we think and we have to coordinate our activities properly. Any questions or concerns, please contact me sooner rather than later. Well, so this wasn't even the table I thought Anybody it was here we can trust? Employee child. Fiona. She's my only remaining contact on the inside. Mm. So what about this Burke guy? He was under arrest mm -hmm. in the same transport as me. Potential allies. Jury still Charlie, out Charlie, Fiona, and Burke are on there. So we've got head of Monarch, which is Paul Serene. He's the creator, believes the end of time is inevitable, is building a survival program for a select few. Then we've got division heads, uh, leads Martin Hatch, Monarch spokesperson, head of security and PR, Serene's key advisor, working against Serene, Dr. Sophia Amaral, head of research, specialist in chronon technology, only Dr. Trade trained to administer Serene's treatment. Intimate relations with Serene. Be sure that one's true. Uh, Henry Kim, Dr. Henry Kim, previous head of research. So she took over head of research when he became a shifter, did she? Um, ceased, not quite. So Therese Agawa is an enforcer. Monarch dispatcher, allegiance to Martin Hatch. Oh, working against Serene. Did I know that she was? aligned with Hatch because that adds an extra interesting thing with her interviewing me is she doing so on Hatch's plan as part of that or what Gibson head of security monarch enforcer deceased Gibson's deceased if that name rings a bell did I kill Gibson oh no Gibson Gibson was at the hospital. Yeah, he's definitely deceased. <laughs> Carlos, um, leader of Reaper Squad, loyal to Hatch, deceased. Carlos was the one that Burke shot lots, wasn't it? When So both of those two died because of Burke. <laughs> nice job, Burke. Potential allies. Fiona Miller, Cronin researcher, confirmed ally working with Beth from the inside. Liam Burke, Monarch Fixer, has... Question Monarch gender extensively deemed Monarch traitor for assisting in Jack's escape. Didn't really do that. Um, Charlie Wincott, Monarch ha hacker, history of allegiance to Martin Hatch, currently loyal, current loyalty unknown. Dick. <laughs> oh, who made these notes? The lifeboat. On the unique yeah. nature of the lifeboat. Well, according to Monarch Communications, Paul Serene just activated that thing. He did. Far sooner than they were supposed to. That's a brief what does that mean? It means we have less time than I hoped. So, this is the nature of the lifeboat. So, stutter briefing. A traditional bunker built to protect its the occupants from an environmental hazard, e.g. chemical attack or nuclear fallout, is typically sealed airtight and the occupants have their own electricity, air supply, provisions, etc. The bunker's interior is isolated from the outside environment, but the lifeboat's design is different. It's not actually sealed because it doesn't have to be. It does have a strong, oh, it does have strong walls and protected access points, but the outside environment is not the problem. It's the lack of the Mayor Joyce field that enables time to exist that makes the outside hazardous. 
From a technological standpoint, those differences make the lifeboat's operating principles quite different, particularly with regard to maintenance. Composed, uh, compared to, say, the failure of life support system in a hermetically sealed survival space, such as a bunker, the failure of the lifeboat stutterproofing system has far more immediate and grave effects. A traditional life support system can be repaired. For instance, failure of CO2 scrubbers would pose a significant threat. The replacement parts and tools, properly trained occupants, uh, could easily repair the system before they would feel any ill effects. In fact, any of the mechanical failures short of full-scale environment breach can be fixed as long as suitable repair visuals are and trained personnel are at hand. But by its very nature, the stutterproofing is different. If it fails, everybody within its area of effect is immediately affected by the zero state and become frozen. So just make everybody wear those little vesty things the whole time they're in the lifeboat. Surely that would just then be processed. Because then if it does stutter, fail, maybe just like most people, because then if, if the stutter happens, it would be more obvious, obviously, if people are frozen. But it seems pretty obvious when it starts happening anyway. Um, but anyway. Uh... The only exception would be personnel wearing an activated coronal harness, such as a striker suit. But given that repairing the stutterproofing system is a highly technical, complicated process, requiring an exceptional proficiency in the operation and engineering of coronal technology, this would be a scenario with a low probability of success. Not really, because surely you just have everybody... like, who can fix the stutterproofing machine... wear one, always. Always wear one. <laughs> so therefore, about the most importance of the lifeboat stutterproofing operates reliably and without faults, with multiple fail-safe systems. Because if it ever fails, it's unlikely that it can be repaired or restarted. Accordingly, once the lifeboat protocol has been activated, there's no real way to deactivate it other than removing the chronon field regulator. This would be highly this would be highly inadvisable, as doing so could not only disrupt the stutterproofing. But more importantly, could uh, without the CFR, the lifeboat's rate of coronal particle consumption is increased by a vast margin, effectively reducing its pot uh, potential operating time to a fraction of it. Oh yeah, I remember reading about that before. Um, which is why I think that this is Will's machine. Uh, unique advantages and risks. Uh, I might just skim this because there's quite a lot to go through. I'm conscious of the fact that it's already been like nearly 20 minutes but I've been just reading. Um, so, let me just skim the reads on this stuff. Duh. Ah, that's a clever thing. So with the like food and stuff, perishables, if they just leave it outside of the stutterproofing area, they've basically got a permanent fridge because it's not gonna rot or anything. <laughs> Handy. Um, just have a storage room outside and then just send people out with the little jackets to go get stuff. You'd never run out of food in the end of time. I mean, you can't grow more, so that would be a problem. Unless they can grow more in the stutterproofing bit, I'd guess. So that's another interesting point, actually. So it's saying about another advantage is that people outside of the lifeboat are frozen in time, so they're not dying. So if they find a solution, then they'll come back. Uh, depending on how long it takes them, though, like, everybody who's got a family, they'll have suddenly aged to their families if it took like years, you know, say it took like 10 years to sort this in the lifeboat. They come out and your dad's like 10 years older. <laughs> You'd be like, what the heck happened? That's an interesting one as well. But they're saying obviously because of the lifeboat situation, the fact people are frozen, they could go out and get somebody, but they don't recommend it because it will give people the idea that they can go get their families and there's not enough space. Statement 1999. Mission statement. Um... December 12th by Paul Serene. I have seen the path ahead and I know it will be hard. I have founded Monarch Solutions to bring together those who will walk it with me. The elite few whose skill, dedication and passion can live, will live on when everything else ends. To that end. 1. We will work under my guiding vision of the future. My knowledge of what is coming. We accept that we cannot change our fate nor can we avoid it. It is a harsh truth but it is the truth. We will accept it and its full implications but we will not deviate from our course nor give it into despair nor give up the fight. Those of us who share in this knowledge, who learn the triumphs and tragedies of the days and years to come, will look past them and find ways to turn them to our advantage. The grey uncertain area beyond what is known will be where we build the empire and we build on, uh, it on the hope that we can persevere, that the end isn't our end, that we will succeed. Two, 
who will expand monarch's influence and power in all possible spheres financial political cultural medical technological military to the best of our ability this is a goal unto itself we will need to be in a position of exceptional resources and the uh, resources and ability to act when the time comes we will build we will seek success and profit not for the sake of wealth and fame but for the sake of preparedness three we will develop science and technology to counter a very specific set of circumstances this will require extensive research and exper experimentation as well as a tremendous financial cost we will not be daunted by these challenges we will complete our work Four, we will not compromise. We recognize that sacrifice is required and we are willing to pay the cost to meet our goals. There is no alternative to this. Doubt, qualms and sentiment are luxuries we cannot afford. Whatever we have to do, whatever we have to do is a lesser evil than the extinction of the entire human race and the, to pretend otherwise is weakness. Nothing in the history of our planet has been as important as this. Nothing we have accomplished is as a species matters if our we fail on our mission. Five, we will not fail. There will be many, ch many challenges in the years ahead. I know what's coming. It can't be averted. There's no escaping it, but we can survive it and we can overcome it and we will. I am dedicating myself, this company and every shred of willpower at my disposal to that mission. I expect the same from those who wish to join in on it. This is Serene's original manifesto for Monarch. They had us practically memorize this. He actually believes he's doing the right thing. It's because he doesn't think the fracture can be stopped. And he's wrong. Is he though? Um, so three phase plan. Phase one, building an empire between February 28th, 1999 to July 4th, 2010. Formation of Monarch Solutions, lucrative investments, global expansion, employee recruitment. Phase two, preparing for the future between July 5th, 2010 and October 8th, 2016. July 4th, is that when... 2010? That's... Was that not when Will finished his machine? The CFR? Because that's a very specific date in 2010, which is when the thing went missing. CFR preparation, Chronon Tech development, militarization. Ground Zero buyout. Lifeboat protocol phase three, 9th to the, uh, 2016 to the end of time. Time machine core heist. Chronon tech rollout. Remove threats to lifeboat protocol. Initiate the lifeboat protocol. I need to have a look at that. Um, when was it? Act two. Brad Bruce swimming pool. Everything schematic. Let's go all the way back to the beginning of this because this was where July fifth. Where are you? It's gone. The countermeasure is gone. What happened? Call me immediately. Paul Serene knew when he made the countermeasure, and he had. A plan to steal it. That's my edit. Hi, what do you want? Was that Paul? That's how he arrived in the past. Oh. Well, how's that possible? It wasn't even the same time machine he entered at the university. That fell over? That's one question I still don't have an answer for. Damn it. <laughs> Did I miss the end? Like, that significant thing. Can I fast forward these? Okay, so that was definitely not... So he... There was a noise. Did he get shot? It almost sounded like he maybe got shot, but... He didn't... He's not dead then, so... Where's that stuff? Um... No use going there before talking to Dr. Amaral. Quickly talk to Amy then, see what she's got on that, and then... I would have known if he got shot in 1999 though, right? But what's on the computer? Monarch files I uploaded, and I kept the juiciest stuff on screen for you. A dream journal. Manual. 
Um, to Sophia from Paul Serene. Dream Journal 5. My fifth entry. Am I supposed to start at the top? Okay, fair. Um, I recall moving through a wheat field that once belonged to my grandparents. I pressed the wheat stalks to the side with my hands, softly sifting through them at first. But as I progressed, uh, pressed forward to the stalks began to warp and curl around my arms, providing resistance to my every move. The entire field began to solidify into an unbreakable material with my body entangled in the mess. I desperately tried to pull myself free, but every movement led to a burning sensation. The world desaturated. Time stopped. I heard the unmistakable sound of my greatest fear approaching. Shifters. They emerged from all sides surrounding me. I looked into the distance and saw a blurry figure approaching. He tried to yell, but the words wouldn't escape his throat, instead transforming into an endless streak pulsing through my ears. His every movement and sound transformed into an agonizing discomfort all throughout my body until it became completely unbearable. The pain trumped logic. I needed to make it stop. I needed to make it all stop. I grew violent, blindly lashing out at the figure, tearing him apart. I needed to destroy the source of motion and sound that caused me such discomfort. The pain stopped as I took the figure's life and as he died his identity became clear. It was me. I had become the very threat that I once feared but I did not fear anymore. I felt something very clear, very pure. I turned around to discover Jack behind me. He didn't move but I could somehow understand his intent. He welcomed me. Every misunderstanding, all the pain we had caused one another was forgotten. We were part of a higher consciousness. I heard a voice behind me. Dr. Kim. He joined us. He told me that time was once the fire in which we burned. He told me that we would burn no more. That almost sounds like him becoming a shifter because they said that the shifters attack anything that's basically like causes a ripple in a stutter, don't they? Like, so it would make sense that any noise is like the disruption is what upsets them and that's why they turn violent. Um, I'm attaching Paul Serene's most recent entry in his dream journal. I'm growing increasingly concerned with the meaning behind his, these dreams, but I need a second opinion. I can treat Paul Sickness really as far as I can determine. The Cronin syndrome is more a metaphysical condition than an actual medical issue, but I'm a physicist. I'm very much out of my depth with all this. The exercise was meant to help alleviate stress to ease Paul's symptoms, but so far it has resulted in the opposite. Time is of the essence. His condition is getting worse by the day. Okay, let's go speak to Amaral. <laughs> now that we've like spent forever doing all that stuff. I'm hoping the rest of the things will be out there. I haven't found my ripple yet. Where will my ripple be? In fact, wouldn't my ripple have been one of the first things that I was supposed to find? And I have not found it yet. So... Well, that doesn't fill me with confidence. Dream Journal 5. There's definitely nothing else over that way, though. That I'm aware of. Just a test. Sometimes the ripples don't actually come up as an orange thing, do they? I mean, it might be up here, to be fair, because this is where I was supposed to come first. So we'll just. Ooh. Something out here. Um. How? Oh. Oh. <laughs> One of three? Okay, maybe I'll just quickly run around before I speak to her, just in case there's anything else out here. Jack. Hi. It's Will. I... I guess you're in Thailand by now. I'm not sure if you even still use his number. I don't like how he left things. I'm... I've been under a lot of pressure. There's some things I should tell you. I'd like to make it right. Just... call me. Okay? Please. It would be difficult to see things like that, wouldn't it, after you've lost him already because you know that there's nothing you can do to actually take back the actions leading up to anything, obviously, like, there's no fixing it because it's done already, you know? So you would just have the potential regrets of 
never being able to fix the issue. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Uh, hopefully that wasn't my ripple. Okay. Um. Can't, can't climb up that final little ledge. Okay, maybe maybe I'll we'll actually just speak to her. Just double check. It's anything obvious here? Definitely got anything of those. All right, Amaral, what do you got? How's it look? The problem is quite simple, really. The power relay is down. You'll need to find a way to reset it up. There, where the light is. I'll lower the ladder for you. What happened to the power relay? A power surge occurred at 7 a.m. this morning when the machine was activated. 7 a.m.? That's hours before we even got here. Yes, it is. Well, the numbers don't lie. Okay, I guess I'm doing some climbing. Do I want to go sure. up there yet? Saves me from volunteering. <laughs> um, I suppose I might as well do this bit, and then I can—I know I can go out that way as long as it doesn't trigger the end of the mission. It should be fine, right? Okay. The console here's got two red lights, one green one. You'll have to reset the power to the two stations with the red lights before activating the relay. Both stations are located above the machine. Just follow the cables to the red lights. Above the machine. The perfect place for a reset switch, Will. Yeah. Of course. So, is it the red cable and that other cable that I'm following? Well... Get up there. I hear noises like there's a chronon, but I don't see any currently. So I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, there's a place over there. It's saying there's something around here. Can I go out that door? Up there. Okay, that's fine. I've got to get up there anyway, haven't I? Uh, do I have to go out the other way to get to that? Probably. Um, let me just try this bit because I think this is one of them. Do I go over that? Okay, what? the first red light is now green. Good. One more to go. Do I have to go around? I'm not sure if you can reach the second one that way. No. You may have to climb down and reach the other side of the machine. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I was <clears throat> presuming was going to be the case. <clears throat> Oops. <clears throat> that didn't really matter. <laughs> All right, where's my rebel? How do I get to that second red light? Through the door in the other bit. You may need to find a way to the other side of the machine and climb up from there. Okay, I can do that. I want to know where my ripple is though, because I'm feeling paranoid that I haven't found it yet. Hopefully it's in the other room. I will just make sure I don't press that button until I find it, because it should in theory be within this region if I've already can I go out there? I can't remember if the ripples showed up as an orange thing or not I think they did oh they're overgrown in here what's that? oh it's a teddy why can't I interact with it? 
You've got to be kidding me. Oh, I was waiting for the light to go. What is it? This is all my stuff from our family home. Oh, maybe this is my ripple. He kept everything. That was my ripple. Hmm. Huh. Guess you thought you might come back. Jack and Will both are... Jack? You okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what do you got to say? What do you got? <laughs> my artsy rebel phase. Complete with a very rebellious <laughs> tattoo guide. I see. I always wanted to try this, actually. Never had the time. That doesn't count as my ripple. I was hoping it would. Is the other thing through the room? Yeah. Where's my gosh darn ripple? What's wrong? Toto. That's my signature. Oh. You made this. She said she always wanted. I've never even been here before. Always wanted to try it. That woman in the She's picture the one that's you, been it? painting. So. Jack. The kids are too. There's something you should know. 1999. I was eight years old, playing in my backyard, and a woman approached me, told me she was from the future. She gave me very specific details of events that would come to pass. She gave me this. Filled with dates, events, proof of it all. Jack, that woman. It was you. Everything I hmm. told myself would happen, did. Every detail, for better or worse, came to pass and couldn't be changed. Our fate is laid out before us, Jack. Everything that happened to get us here, every sacrifice that was made, they're all a part of this path. And they can't be changed or undone. Beth. When we step in that time machine, you will see for yourself. All right. If you're that sure about how all this works, we can try your way. Distant mirror. Beth told you about how she met herself. Where is it? It's her. She's the one who's been painting all over the city. So she's still around? Jesus. Future Beth? Like, has she... Or has she kind of caught up on herself? Oh, can I climb over this? Maybe. No. Why does it feel like it's in that toilet? Okay, let me see what this is first. Notebook was full of dates. Oh, that's best notebook. Events that would come to pass, instructions. Her entire existence was formed out of those pages. Huh. Beth, I know that this encounter will be a lot to take in. After all, it's not every day you meet your future self. I'd like to tell you that you need to keep all this secret, but I know you won't listen. You'll learn to the lesson the hard way. The next few years won't be easy for you. Nobody you know is ever going to understand what you're going through. Those closest to you will be uh, will try to change you to convince you that you're losing your mind. Um, you're not. You are special. You have been chosen to do something amazing. Know that your struggles will all be worth it in the end because you have a purpose. You're going to save the world. How do I know? I've been through all this before and I'm going to prove it. Um, below you will find a list of events that will come to pass in the future. They cannot be changed or undone. It will take time for you to accept this, but eventually you will learn to use this knowledge to your advantage. You will be prepared for what's coming. October 3rd, 2000. Derek Stevenson has been bullying you for months. On October 3rd, you push him down staircase at school you'll do everything in your power to resist this partly to avoid the consequences partly to prove the book wrong but the terrible things he will say in that moment will be too much for you to handle he'll pretend to cry claim that you gave him a concussion and you'll take all the blame you'll be transferred to another school you'll hope things will get better they won't it's going to be a difficult year whenever you feel helpless just remember the book you're special you have a purpose they don't hold on to that and if it makes you feel better 16 years from now Derek will be working at a dollar store he still lives with his bum. Screw you, Derek. Uh, Mr. Hart 
from next door will pass away also. 2001, February, the kids at school will steal your jacket. Your parents will claim that you're hiding it on purpose so that they will buy you a new one. Look in the bin on the corner of 3rd and Main. You'll find something that will get you through the winter. You'll be teased for wearing it by Michelle. You'll fight back, but it will only make things work. Even at worst, eventually you are able to contain your anger, take her aside and say the following to her. I'm sorry about your mum. Then give her a hug. She will push you away. She will look incredibly confused, vulnerable. She will never tease you again. April 24th, 2001. Erica, your best friend, will break her arm. Having read this, you will do everything in your power to prevent this. The actions you take to avoid this from happening will only make it so. This is the first time you will truly witness that your fate is already determined. It cannot be changed. Erica will blame you for the incident. Try not to take this to heart. You will soon discover that she isn't the friend you thought she was. Stay strong. You'll find people who respect you for who you are very soon. August 5th, 2001. You will take the night bus home. There will be only one other passenger on board. A scruffy looking kid with a black eye. His name is Jack Joyce. <gasps> Remember his face. He's going to become important down the line. So she met us 15 years ago. That's cool. I sort of met us. She saw us. Uh, September 11th, 2001. This is the one that will change you. An event will occur that will devastate the entire nation. An act of terrorism will cause the, cause the World Trade Centers to collapse. Thousands will die. I won't go into further detail because the more you know, the more painful it will be become when you are unable to prevent it, and you will try to prevent it. You will fail. You will curse the book for not telling you more. You will curse yourself for not being able to stop it. It will take a long time to get over this, but eventually you will take, uh, use this pain to fuel your path forward. You're, you've now felt what it is to be completely unprepared for what's coming. It won't happen again. Next time you'll be ready. This is the event that finally will make you believe. Any doubt you had will disappear. You're ready to take on the mission. So what's coming? October 8th, 2016, an, Amer uh, an American, <laughs> my brain's gone funny, an experiment gone wrong will cause time to break down. The event will be referred to as a fracture in time. The onset of this event cannot be prevented, but the outcome must be. If the fracture is not stopped when time, uh, then time itself will come to an end. Life on our planet will end. Saving the world wasn't an overstatement. It is your mission. You must stop the fracture. You can pull this off, but to do so, you need to follow some simple instructions. Learn who to trust. Short answer, nobody. The less people know about you, the safer you will be. From this point forward, your mission takes priority over every other aspect of your life. Do not start a relationship of any kind that you aren't willing to leave behind at a moment's notice. There is one exception to this rule. We'll get to that. Know your enemy. Monarch solutions. They will try to prevent you from achieving your goal. Learn everything you can about them. You will know the best way to achieve this when the time is right. Monarch is run by name, a, pan, uh, a man named Paul Serene. You must never be seen by Paul Serene. If he discovers you, then you will risk full, uh, failing your mission. Learn everything you can about him. Remain hidden. But keep in mind that the best place to hide is often in plain sight. Blend in. Change your appearance frequency. Hair colour, clothing style, everything. Be cautious about drawing attention to yourself. Listen and blend in. Examine those around you. The way they move, speak, laugh. Copy them and become your surroundings. Train daily. There uh, are a series of skills you will need to master to truly... Be prepared. Hand to hand combat. Filipino ca Cali? I don't know what that is. And Jeet Jun Do. Uh, weapons training. Knives, pistols, shotguns, rifles. Wilderness survival. Compartmentalization. Lip reading. Face reading. The list is one that you will build as you go. It's in time you will understand what's necessary and what isn't. Don't rush yourself. Start with gymnastics. Study your target. Jack Joyce. He is the one person who can help you in your mission. He is the exception to rule one. You can trust him. Learn what you can about Jack. Study him from afar, but do not approach him directly. You aren't the only one watching him. Yeah. On October 9th, 2016, you will rescue Jack Joyce. From there, the next steps will reveal themselves. Be patient with him. He's stubborn, reckless, naive, but you can't do this without him, and he has his moments. He's smarter than he seems at first. Don't mistake, mistake grief for stupidity. Study your objective. The countermeasure. This is the device that was built to stop the fracture in time. This is your objective. Find the countermeasure and use it to stop the fracture. Achieve this and the world will be saved. The device was built by Jack's brother, Dr. William Joyce. Any attempt to contact William or find the countermeasure before the onset of the fracture will be in vain. Wait, Jack will show you the way. Retrieve, 
Retrieving the countermeasure will not be a simple task. It will involve great hardship and sacrifice. When the time comes, you will be ready for this. When you first read this, uh, it won't make any sense to you. Over time, you'll believe every word, but you will feel underprepared. Um, you will wish that I had told you everything. I promise you that what is written here is everything you will need in order to get to where you need to be. I know this because I am already there. Chin up, Toto. You're going to achieve amazing things from you. Okay, so the only thing I don't have right now, I believe, is my rifle, right? Oh no, I've got a couple more things to get. Uh, a chronon. And another one. Okay. And whatever that is in there, why can't I find that? I feel like it's in there. So, what do I do about that? I can't seem to jump at all, so I don't know. I'll have to come back to that. See if it's just something they're limiting me on at the moment for some reason. Or if it's not even there, maybe it's around here. Probably around here. <laughs> Damn it. Can I open this now? Shortcut. Yeah, it's over here. Looks climbable. Damn it. I'll uh, have those things. Nice. Okay. Oops, what's climbable? Sorry. Oh, that. <laughs> that bit. Uh, I guess this way? And then this is gonna get me out here. Oh, because these were broken. Why the hell would your brother put maintenance controls way up there? Don't ask That's me. exactly the kind of question that never would have entered Will's mind while building this thing. Hey, I think I can get to the reset from here. Yeah. Of course. Shit. I'm still getting used to that. Uh. Don't expect to. Void stepping on what? It's easier said than done. I wonder if I should have another look. <laughs> I don't know whether to get this because I don't know if that's going to lock me out from getting my ripple. Because that was the last thing, which means it's probably going to be the last thing. Actually, I'm going to just have a look around once. Oops. Oops. That wasn't what I was planning. <laughs> Is that going to be? You've been loyal to Serene for years. How do we know we can trust you? Good question. My loyalty has always been to the future. I will dedicate myself to whatever assures our survival. You're not mad at him. Even after he turned his back on you. Paul's doing what he believes is right. The same as you. When he came to see me in that cell, he said something about the end bringing new dangers. What did he mean? Shifters. Monarch was built to protect us from what comes after time stops. What exactly does Monarch think is coming? When the fracture escalates further, you'll see for yourself. That's all of her concession points. There was definitely nothing out there. Oh, what you got? Is the city still hunting for me? In full force. There's an entire webpage dedicated to potential Jack Joy sightings. So I've been filling it in with false leads for fun. Nice. Do you want to pitch in? Mm. Uh, post that I was spotted in the back of a catering van somewhere. You can do better than that. But okay, I'll let them know. She's funny.
I do more with this? My stream channel. How was that? If I didn't get it. What was it? Maybe it's that conversation with Amor. I didn't. I don't remember seeing. Okay, well, we found it. I don't know what it was, but it must have been either the conversation with Amor or the conversation with Amy, because I haven't found anything new. <laughs> That'll do, though. I'm happy. We got it. I don't remember. I didn't see it, like, usually it pops up in the thing, doesn't it? When, it, when you get it? I didn't see it do that. It's weird. Didn't die this time. Oh, I have to pick this again? Oh, is that just doing that because I fell off? I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all lights are green. Now what? Just go back, I guess. <laughs> I guess I could have gone back at any point. I was just nervous that if I press that, it might then go to a cutscene before I could do anything else. Oh, I suppose that's what this bit's for. Beth, did you have anything else to say? Where are you? She was loitering there. She gone over to Amaral now. Oh, there she is. Beth, do you have any other conversations before we um do whatever we're doing right now? That seems to have been everybody. Um. Now what? Oh, I have to get back up there. No. Jump down for nothing! <laughs> <laughs> Forgot what I did already. Got so distracted by all my lore that I've already forgotten the mission. Whoopsie. We're doing something with these buttons. Activate the corridor. Cool. So who activated it at seven o'clock this morning? It's ready. It's actually functioning. I suppose she's not actually seen the machine in okay. use, has she? Okay, we're doing this. Because it's I'll set the data to the broken. console. Uh which one's the right one? Get the date. Set the date. Set the date. Where's where's which console? That console. It's gonna say I know there were like three last time we were here, so. July 4th, 2010. Are you ready? No. Are you? Sure. Oh. This is it. Oh, you gotta do is walk around a corner. Turn back. It's a cake. Hey, wait, wait. <laughs> She go without me. What did you do? That was the wrong door. You changed the date. Where is she? Where is she? I had no choice. I couldn't let you take the countermeasure. It would put our entire plan at risk. I already called Monarch from the terminal. They're on their way. It's over. Oh no, Beth's gone. Fuck! Where did you send her? We need the countermeasure to run the lifeboat. I knew it! I knew it! Yeah, okay. I'm gonna follow through with the plan. Tie her up and get as far away from here as you can. I will. You just take care of yourself, Jack. Okay? So she's gone to the future because she went that way. Ooh. Does this count as the next the next act? It does. Okay. I don't want to use this then. I might stop here. How many collectibles have we got in this? Not many. A few Cronon sources, some computers documents. Um so we do have a new diary with Beth though, right? We do. Once I enter that machine, on Beth's thoughts about entering time machine and not knowing what comes next. Okay, so we'll just watch this and then on the next one we can pick up and do this whole bit because I was running around for quite a while trying to find that.
We've Thanks. got Dr. Amaral. If she can fix this machine, then this is it. I have mixed feelings. That notebook gave me some kind of sense of invulnerability. I always knew what came next. Once I enter that machine, from that point forward, this story's unwritten. I haven't told Jack this, but I have found things in this swimming pool. Scattered papers, journal entries in my handwriting, they're... My journey from this point forward isn't gonna be easy. That much is clear. As long as we succeed, it's all worth it. This can't be for nothing. We will succeed. We have to. It's our destiny. Hmm. I wonder what she saw in the journals. So when do we get another Beth thing? End of this part. Okay. Um. Jack, we haven't heard anything new with him yet, have we? No, because it's the next part is Act 5. Okay, so that was a really cool episode, Um, actually. There was a lot of... I know it probably seemed like it took forever to do because there was just a lot of reading, but it was all quite interesting stuff to go across. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see like what happens if Beth's obviously gone into the future because she went that way and they said count, uh, clockwise to go forward in time. So I wonder if that's where she'll first encounter Serene because he said that she was hunting him in the future because there was all the shifters and stuff around. So maybe that's sort of the loop of that closing of her going there and then she'll somehow get back to 1999 and be hunting him a bit there because there was he had that flashback of her um, hunting him in the past too, didn't he? And then she'll go see herself as a kid and give her the notebook. I wonder if she writes the notebook or if she gives her the notebook she's been given. So it's just like somebody's written this, but not any of the current Beths. <laughs> but then she left it in the pool, didn't she? Um, so no, because she left it on the bed. So she must actually write the, the thing. Um, but yeah, I'm intrigued by that. I don't know if that means that she's not going to, we're not going to see her again. Or if we will, because there was the thing that happened at seven o'clock in the morning that overloaded the machine. I wonder if they, maybe that was like Beth getting back to this time because at some point she was in 2014 with Will, uh, 2010, sorry, with Will, and then she disappeared, wasn't she? Because then he was writing all those emails saying that she disappeared. Where was she? So maybe she came back from 2014 to present, but she'd be a lot older if she's been stuck there since 1999. And then she's used this machine to jump about a bit. Don't know. That'll be interesting. Um, but I'm going to leave this here. So on the next one, we're going to use the time machine to travel to July 4th, 2010. And I know it's not going to go well, but I think Amaral basically just confirmed what I've been saying about the countermeasure being the CFR thing. Because she said that they need it to power the lifeboat. So the countermeasure is currently in Monarch's lifeboat. I think was the implication of that. <sighs> I'm not sure about the pool bit as well, because they said was that pool. When I rewatched the video with Will, it looked like he'd been shot or something where he fell down. So did Paul come through and shoot him? He didn't see him. But then if he shot him, did he only injure him and then like he took him and cured healed him? Took him to a hospital or something? Or is that like a different will? different timeline a different version something don't know because we know that from control and stuff there's obviously different like universes and whatnot so this could be a different cycle of it happening different group of people they somehow sidestep into a different reality you know Anyway, I'm going to leave you here, so I will see you guys next time.